like for YouTube editing. Like I only know like the bare minimum. That's it. But that's I mean, do you really need to know more than that? No, but I would like to. It, okay, so when when someone's when someone's as popular as you are and yes. continuing to grow yeah. and get followers and following, because there's a difference. You know, there's a difference, right? Yes, I no, deal no, with so I many athletes. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a difference between followers and a following. Yes, yeah, because if you tell your followers to go out and buy something, they're not going to do it. Not you per se, but just a, a, a regular athlete that has a had that has followers. Right, right, right. But a following. I I influence people. Exactly. I hate that word though. I But hate, I do. Like, it I, seems mad scummy. And it sucks because like that's like my title now. I'm like I'm an influencer. Like I influence people to do things. <laughs> and it's I like mean, I have to be careful of everything I say. Well, yeah, because you're impressionable to other people now. Correct. So like everything that you're going to say, oh shit. She only eats asparagus? Wait, she's on fit tea for meal 3? I got to have that. So <laughs> Yeah, as you continue to grow, what I do and what so many other creators do, that's a job for you. Like, it's cool to learn it. it uh, like, yes. I know. I feel like you got that nerdy side. You want to- I am a little nerdy. That's the thing. Like, don't forget I'm an accountant. I am a fucking yeah. bookworm. Like, I like that stuff. So I'm just like- And also, just because like I, I want to get more YouTubes out. Does yeah. that make sense? And like, having someone edit all the time, like, at the end of the day, it's a lot of money. Yeah. So, like, I'm trying to learn, like, the little, like, tricks to try to make it seem like, not that it was the professionally done, but, like, at least you can watch it and be like, oh, this is a good video. Oh, this was good. Yeah, I like this. You know what I mean? Like, not yeah. bad. Like, you know, like a C plus. Like, that's that's all right. <laughs> but I think you were, I think you get the hint of it now. What do you use to edit? Final Cut Pro. Okay, Final Cut's cool. Yeah. It's like, it's like the upgraded version oh, of, of iMovie. iMovie. So, you know. It's, like, easy enough. Yeah, and it's got more than enough, like, just get plugins from sites. Just get different plugins That's to just exactly make it easier. Every big name person uses that shit. They use plugins. They use shit like that. No one's sitting there actually doing like the, oh my the transitions and the generators and all that. Yeah. No and if it. they are, no. y'all are wasting your time, man. <laughs> make your life a little easier. Pay the money. Just get a plugin. It's so easy. Literally, you pay like what? A mo like a monthly thing? And it's like a template. That's yeah, there's mad good yeah, sites yeah. that you can yeah. just get plugins for. So that's what I started doing. And... I'm hopefully gonna like start doing it more often now. It's like my worst pet peeve, I think. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna make a YouTube and I have all this content. I literally have like, since the beginning of this year, content that I've literally just never released. Because either like I'm too lazy to edit or like I've n never got someone else to do it or I'm just, I don't know, I don't have time. It sucks, be well, we'll get into it, but since I quit my job, it's like, what else are you doing, Sabrina? <laughs> like, what are you doing during the day? I'm sure there's still a lot to be done, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, there is. Because there's a lot of people that look at your stories or they look at your lifestyle. Correct. And they sit there and they go, ah, she's got it made. It's easy. And no, it's not. I, I, can't exp I can't stress that enough. No one really, like, okay, maybe some people have it easy. But there's really a very few that have it easy. Because even when you're negotiating deals and Correct. keeping up with your physique and training and trying to onboard new ways to have multiple streams of income that's a lot of fucking work and no, before the before you notice it like oh shit it's eight o'clock at night yeah it's nine o'clock at night I, I do have to sleep you know don't listen to all these in instagram influencers and these fucking youtubers i can't stand these people we all gotta sleep okay i'm you still in bed by nine sorry are you, <laughs> you in bed by nine yes i'm in bed oh by nine. man i wish nine ten o'clock i'm in bed i'm such a night owl and no. and i'm an early morning <laughs> riser so it's it, it's the worst of oh, both so you worlds. Just don't work on sleep. I don't. I don't. And then when I had my editing in my bedroom, uh, back when before I had the office and the space and everything like that, I would literally be playing Xbox until eleven, twelve o'clock at night, just to dis just to kind of disconnect my brain. Right. And then I all the boys would sign off. All right, good night, boys. Night. I'd be sitting there, and I look to my left, and my computer's just sitting there on. And I go, hmm. I could finish that video from the other day. Like oh. I could I could bang it out, and then I would edit till four or five in the morning. Go to sleep for like three hours. Wake up at eight nine a.m. Yeah, and I would I would start the day over again. What shoots do we have to do? What other edits? Like what other stuff? And then obviously it turned into the podcast, and it turned into having large contracts with different clients, and it, it which is all good things. We make all, it sound like it's a no, lot, but it's all a good all blessings, all blessings. But you know, I was talking to somebody today on the phone about some business stuff and and upcoming projects and whatnot. Yeah, and he had mentioned to me um, nobody understands what the owner goes through. 
They don't. No. They don't understand what the head of the company goes <clears throat> through. No. And I mean, it's it's one of one. It's me. So it's just me. I'm trying to get the team together. It's hard to find good help. So I'm trying to really make the right decisions in terms of getting good editors, getting good shooters, getting good people that you can trust right. and that want to work the same grind that we do, which is far and few between with certain things. I feel like that's like absent nowadays. It's very absent, especially after COVID. COVID made everybody lazy. Correct. And we all got a touch of it. We all got a touch of being able to kick our feet up, yeah. relax, like drink whiskey, play X, but like whatever, whatever your vice was during COVID, everybody hid into their own little, 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 little angle of viceness. I, I mean, I never stopped, but yeah, I mean, cause like all of our work went on like online. So we all did work from home. So like for me, it got worse. And like, that's what I was going to say. Like you were nonstop, like you were working. So I was obviously, I feel like no one knows. So like I'm a big pro auditor. Well, I was. This is Sabrina, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> this is Sabrina. I'm very happy Sabrina. to have her. Sabrina yeah. Nick, which I just found, like, just realized. It's not Sabrina and Nick. It's Sabrina and Nicole. Yeah, it's not and Sabrina Nick. and Nick. It's Sabrina Nick. <laughs> so I was a big four auditor, yes. Um, <clears throat> literally went to school. Um, wait, actually, this is also my second time being, like, an influencer that no one knows. Really? So, what were you an influencer with first? So I was, 2017, I started my fitness page, and it blew up. Um, way back then I had different sponsorships and like, I, it wasn't that big either. It was like 16,000 followers, but it was still a following. I've been grinding on Instagram since 2011 and I have 7,050 followers. All right. That's, well, that's, that's a good yeah, following. Yeah. So like, <laughs> yeah. So way back when, um, I started then and then I went ghost to focus on school and a lot of people don't know that either. So I had to like kind of make a decision and it was like, all right, do I continue influencing at the time? Cause like. Instagram was so new, like social media was very new. And I was like, all right, do I have a career or do I continue influencing? So I was like, you know what? Let me just go get my degrees. And if anything, I can always start this up again. Um, and if you don't mind me inter interrupting, where did you go to school? Uh, SUNY L. Westbury. Oh, nice. So actually I did Nassau for two years. I got my associates. Yep. <laughs> Save the money. <laughs> Love that. Save the yes, money. <laughs> I did not spend money on college, but I mean, I'm still in debt. But anyway, so then I finished my bachelor's at SUNY L. Westbury and I have my master's. So again, like I am a bookworm and no one knows that I am into fitness, but I'm also very smart and everyone forgets that. And I have the whole business aspect part of it. So I've worked my entire life since I was like 14, 14, 15. I worked my way up in accounting, literally got to a big four. I was in like the corporate world. I was like super business. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm there. And all of a sudden I started posting TikToks. Mm. <laughs> So then the TikTok started going crazy. I got into crazy shape. Um, and then all the sponsorships came along. It was literally like insane. I don't even know how it happened. It was something like everyone always dreams of. You know, you look at an influencer and you're like, damn, like they have the life. You know, and I was like, I was like, yeah, that'd be really cool. Like easy way to make money. You're doing what you love. Like this is great. But in the back of my head and of course my parents are just like, nah, you need a degree and you need a job. Yeah. And that was like the always in the back of my mind. No, you need like a safe, you need a 401k, you need to retire. Yeah. Stability. Stability. Because they could drop you at the. Correct. At the, I don't even know, uh, drop. they could drop you at the drop of a hat. Is that it? Yes. I guess everyone's wearing hats at corporate jobs now. <laughs> drop you at the drop of a hat. <laughs> Literally, they can fire you at any second. But anyway, uh, that was stability for me. So I was doing those two things for a while. And then finally, um, I got fed up with the corporate world. Um, influencing was doing really good. Um, all my sponsorships, which I'm super thankful for, kind of like took over and I finally was able to quit my job. So like now I am full time influencer, but I was doing th those crazy work hours from literally. So this is what like topped me off. So I had three busy seasons since September. So that means that I was working like on three different audits from September to about February, March. And that means there were weeks where I was working like 80 hours a week. So I was working till in the office because some people may like they don't want you working from home. They want you working till literally like two o'clock in the morning. So I'd be in the office till 2 a.m. and then back at eight. And I was like, this is horrible for the amount of money I'm making. This is a horrible way of living. And like not to shoot anyone down, but I was like, this is this is not for me. Some people love that. Some <laughs> people love that. No, I got to grind it out in the office and do the busy work and stuff like that. And there's a lot of people that kind of have the epiphany that you did wake up and they go, I, I can't do this shit. No, but there's a lot of people that wake up, say the same thing that you did, and then they don't do anything about it. Correct. And then they're stuck and they're miserable and yes. then they become 
old and feel undervalued from their entire life's work as if it was all for nothing, or they get dropped later on in life for somebody younger that fresh out of college that they can get for, you know, a quarter of the price. Exactly. And they just sit there and they go, what, what did I do? I, I slaved so away. Much. Yep. I slaved away my whole life. So it's not, and it's not easy to make the decision that you made. No, no, It no, may no, no. seem like it is. No, it was not an easy decision, but it was totally worth it. And I look back and I'm like, wow, I really was like missing out on life. Like the little things, you know, like, um, being able to attend things or not always being like, oh no, I have to work or just, you know, being able to go grocery shopping when like there are still things in stock. Like it's, yeah. it's stupid things like that, but I'm just like, I'm enjoying life or like I'm able to walk my dog now. Like I go in the morning, I go at night. Like it's, it's a way better way of life. I would say. I remember seeing your posts <clears throat> of you in the corner, like in the, in the apartment yes. with your little setup yes. and how you'd be there all day. Yes. You'd literally leave to just go do cardio or go to Bev's to train, Correct. and then you'd come back, yep. and you'd be right back in that little corner yes. again. So I have that in my apartment, which is like a basically eh, this area right here. This and the audit room was exactly the same. And picture like five of us in here, like back to back. And that was like we did not leave the audit room. And same thing with my apartment. We wouldn't leave unless it was like for food. That's it. So when I was trying to – this was actually going back to like when I was going to compete. So like I got thrown into an audit and I was working 80 hours a week and I was literally in this room and people were like, oh, like, why, why'd you stop? Like, oh, like, like everyone thinks like, I guess little of me because I didn't continue with the prep. But I was like, guys, if you're stuck working 80 hours a week in this room, how am I supposed to train? How am I supposed to do cardio? How am I supposed to like stay on a meal plan when you're literally stressing at two o'clock in the morning about bank statements? <laughs> like it's super, yeah. it's super, like it's stupid, but I was like. No, I can't do it anymore. Like I have to just eat, focus on work, and that's what that's what was making me money at the time, and it was very important to me. And then the cortisol levels are just through the roof oh, because yeah. you're just you're stressed Stress. all the time, having to just keep up with the workflow, yeah, no. appease your and and please the bosses, and make sure that everything is going well, and you have your own life that you're trying to actually live. Exactly. So not only are you holding stress, like holding water from stress, then you're sitting in a chair for like 14 hours a day. So, like, can you imagine how much water I was holding after the first week? I was like, no, like, there's no, I was like, what, four weeks out at the time? Four weeks. And I was like, it's fine. Like, I can always do this. Like, the stage is always there. It's not a big deal. So I tell a lot of people. I tell a lot of people. It's stage is always going to be there. You don't have. Nothing's going to change. Like, uh, are you 50? Are no. you 40 years old? Like, you got plenty of time. By the way, I'm 24. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. She got way, plenty, of, more time than I do if I decide to step back on stage. My old ass, 31 years old this, this month. <laughs> Only 24, but. I'm going to take a sip of this. Uh-oh. The orange dreamsicle. Oh, it's good. <laughs> it tastes exactly like the ice cream, actually. Exactly. Like, on point. I'll give you some rainbow sherbet, and uh, I have the... Um I have the limited flavor that's only available in Hawaii, in Hawaii now or on Amazon, the Lilikoi Liche. Oh, I'll is take that, it. Is that the Liche? Leche? I don't... Wait. No, Leche Spanish. I was going to say. Yeah, that no, sounds... No. L Y C H E E. There was a lot of liche in Hawaii because they have such Asian influence and culture down there. Yeah. Which I mean, I knew, but I didn't realize. My buddy, when I was down in Hawaii, took me to. Um, they had this underneath the mall. They had this underground food court of all authentic Japanese spots. That's pretty cool. It, rows and rows of just stands, all written in Japanese, and it was wild. I tried takoyaki the first time I ever tried takoyaki there, which is a. Do you like seafood? Yeah. It's better than chicken breast and asparagus all day. That's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like a little dough ball with uh octopus on the inside of it. Okay. I'm sorry, you're talking to Argentinian. We like we like steak. She's not Argentinian. You see here she comes on my podcast, she lies. Don't lie. We are the open I'm, forum. We're all trying yeah, to be no. authentic with each other. <laughs> no, literally Argentinian and Italian. I love that. Yeah. So it's I a, love that. It's I, a, I love, love the food. mixing of cultures. It's oh, so yeah. awesome. Yeah, no, no. So that's another thing, too. I feel like even though I'm in the bodybuilding world, people forget I love food. Like, I'm from Spanish and Italian. We get, like, the best of both worlds. Like, you want empanadas and you want pasta, pizza, like, in the middle of everything. We got everything. So let me ask you, parents, who's Argentinian? Who's... Both of my parents were both born in Argentina. Okay, so the Italian side's up, up the, the lineage? Not that bad, actually. My grandma and... Yeah, my grandma was born in Italy. My grandfather was from Hungary. Oh, cool. So there's some Hungarian in there. And then the other side was Argentina. So it's like a mix. And there's some Polish in there. But mostly just I speak Spanish because I'm Argentinian, so Castellano. 
and then Italian. So those are the two. And you were born here? Or I was you... born here. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That was the one. That'd be cool if you were down there for a little while, though. We did go in 2017, but I, I don't know if I would go back to live there. Um, I don't know. I hear great things about it lately. I'm so I'm weird when it comes to traveling. Why? I've been to so many t places around the world. I love France. I love Switzerland. Italy was cool. Um, Bro, you just said the opposite of everything. Usually I hear like great things about Italy and France is like, eh. No, I love France. But I also spoke French. Like oh. this is when I was heavy in it in college. Ah, 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 yeah, I, I didn't keep up with it, so I don't remember a lot of it. That was the hardest language to ever learn. French? So, yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm no. good at Spanish. I'm good at Italian. French? No. Nah. Well, the funny thing with that was that it was a study abroad program and the, the teacher's son came on the trip with us. Got it. Super dope. Loved him. I loved Janet and her son. Everybody was so cool. But- he spoke a lot of he spoke a lot of different languages. He spoke Italian, um, he spoke Spanish. But then when we got to France, he didn't speak French. So he would try to be like the big shot, in yes. front, you know, with everybody because with the group of kids, everyone would look at him and be like, "Yo, my, yo, tell us how to get here. Talk to the locals." And he wouldn't be able to. Right. So he would, and then French people get offended very easily. It, it's 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 interesting to like watch. So I'd be in the back just sitting there, and he'd go. He was like, all right, Nick, come here. I'm like, all right. So I talked to the French person. I'd be like, yo, I jump on the français a little bit. I speak a little bit. Like, how do we, how do we get here? Um, I, he said something about the French Quarter. We wanted to go to the French Quarter because that's where they do okay. absinthe shots and they get crazy. Yeah. It's right by uh, Notre Dame. Okay. So we, we're trying to get there. And he said, how do we get, no, Latin Quarter. How do we get to the Latin Quarter? But the way that he said it was, how do we get to the Latin Quarter? Not, how do you, quartier latin? So switching the words. Okay, so it sounded wrong. So the guy hated that he was saying it wrong. So then Got I it. came out and I said it with the with the quartier latin. He, oh, the quartier latin, this Isn't way, this way. You go yeah. this way. He's like, yo, fuck you, Nick. <laughs> I was like, yo, man, listen, you gotta you gotta know how to speak to these people. <laughs> they don't want tourists in their area. And then we had we had a little run in with French gangsters, the really? French gangsters in Nice. That was wild. So we're trying to find clubs. Trying okay. to find clubs in Nice, and it was the off season. Nice is like a beach town. It's like Long okay. Beach. It's like um, what are the beach towns are there? I don't know. Beach town. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a destination spot. Like they there's there's like it, Ocean City type of thing. Exactly. Okay. Yes, got it has it. to be in season got for it, it to be popping. Okay, makes sense. So we got there, and it was like fucking dead. It was like literally dead. There was like nobody around. So we're walking around trying to find uh, spots to go to, and we find this little hole in the wall bar. And the kids that I'm with, you know, they're all college kids. A lot of these kids, they're not cultured. They don't go. They, this is their first time traveling outside the U.S. They don't know what's going. You know, they, you got to have a certain awareness about you. Just like right. keep your head on a swivel. Keep your head on straight. Don't disrespect other people in, in, in their country, their territory, which is how you totally should live sense. anyway. I was going to say. You should live like that anyway. Know. But unfortunately, you have to remind people of that. And if something happens, like a, an ag a disagreement, an argument, you got to throw your hands up. You're in their territory, man. Right. Their You're police. Their, yo, my bad, dude. No, no, no. We're, we're, we're good. Like, don't, we're, I don't want to fuck with you. We, there's no problems. No one's backing you up. No one's <laughs> backing you up. Country. We got a small group of kids, young ass kids in college that barely anybody has any street wherewithal. <laughs> yeah. So we walk into this spot. And uh, I say hey to the bouncer in French. He, he, he gave me a nod like, oh, you're cool. Like, we're good. Okay. And then we get through. And it was honestly maybe double the size of my office. It was small. Oh, and so they were like sardines in there. Yeah, there were table, a couple of tables and then the bar. And you just saw it was like that, it was like that moment in a movie where the, the group of people walk in and the beer bottle drops in the background. Like, and you just hear it like hit the ground and everyone just like looks at you. Like, what are these kids doing here? Right. So we walk in and then the woman at the front goes, you have to check your coats. So I said, all right. So I take my coat off, you know, whatever, whatever the rules are, whatever you want to do. And she said something like it was it was like 30 euros to check the coat. Okay. That's expensive, man. I mean, I don't know the, the translation. Well, now, now I mean, I think the euro and the dollar are, are one to one. So, like, just think of it like that. 30 bucks to check your coat. Yeah. So I was like, whatever is it, it is. Is it bad? I don't know what it is now. That's not great. Well, either. I mean, it's, it's just not great. It's just okay, not great. Right. You should be able to just, honestly, they should just take your coat. Right. And they should just, you'd throw them five bucks yeah. at the end of the night. No, that makes sense. So I'm just like, all right, whatever. 30 euros, cool. So I'm about to take the money out. And one of the kids I was with, they're, they're taking his coat from him. He's like, nah, don't fucking touch me. Like he, he like elbows them and shit. And then right. Over a coat? 
because he was just overreacting and it, I think financially he didn't want to pay it, okay, whatever it was. No. But like, you got to like use your words. You don't like shimmy out and like throw elbows, especially at the girl at the front desk. And then the back door opens up and like four big ass dudes come out. And I look, I'm like, oh, this is it. This is where Nick gets killed in a bar in Nice in the off season. They're never going to find me. I'm like, that's it. <laughs> so they come out. And the guy, the one of the bouncers grabs the kid. I just went, I, I went, oh, 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 so I, with as much French as I could like muster up in a nerve wracking situation, I'm like, he's stupid, please. I'm like, we're good. Like he, he didn't mean it. We'll go. I was like, you could keep the euros that we paid you already, whatever yeah. it is. Smart. And the dude in broken English goes, because of you, he'd not get fucked up. I'm like, okay, we're out. I'm like, let's go. Everybody out. <laughs> Fuck your coat. Leave it. I'm like, leave it. It's theirs now. I don't care. I'll buy you one when we go back to the States. So traveling. <laughs> Moral of the story. I enjoy traveling. I really do. I like seeing new areas, but I've never been somewhere where I'm just like, oh, I could just stay here forever. I, I love coming home. Even in the really? even even in I'm going to LA next week with Kai. Even traveling within the states, I've gone to Colorado, California, Arizona, Florida a bunch. Yeah. I've been to Atlanta. I've, I've been to a lot of places, Texas. And every time I go, yeah, it's dope here. Mm. I miss New York. I miss Long Island. I do. I know you're laughing at me because you're you're you you're about to be out. But I'm just like, yeah. I just I miss the. I like the seasons. Okay. I like that ticks, mosquitoes, everything dies. I like that I get six months of death, and everything just starts fresh in the spring again instead of like the buildup. And then you get like Florida and you have swamplands and gators. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just thanks, dude. Uh, yeah, listen, that's, that's a nice welcome. Oh, listen. I mean, it's it, different strokes for different folks. I I've been asked to move to Florida before. Yes, I've been asked to move to Texas before. I don't know how Kenji would do with the heat. You know, the dogs adapt. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. You know, my there's a lot of anything for the dogs. Of course, and there's a lot of Akita breeders in Texas. Okay. So they get used to the heat. Yes. But I don't know if I'll get used to the heat. I'm not, like I totally agree with most of the states that you said. Like Cali, it was like eh. Nah, Cali sucks. I can't I Texas. Meh. Yeah, Texas is all right. And then like, I'm sorry, but like you go to Florida and it's just like, this is this is the life. Oh, that's the life. That's to me, it's I guess it's I don't know, the Spanish, like everyone's just like chill. Like you don't have to I don't know. It's a it's a different way of life, I kind of say it. Like, I guess it's like a vacation life. Do you think that'll change when you move down there and the honeymoon phase will go away? Maybe. I'll let you know. <laughs> after I expect a year. that text. I expect that text. <laughs> Be like, nah, I'm coming back to New York. Or... Uh, listen, and, and that there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I've no. had a lot of friends leave and come back. And a lot of younger kids that talk to me that I'm friendly with, just through the gym or neighbors in my old neighborhood, I try to give advice where I can. And I tell people, like, my advice is just my advice. Right. You do whatever you want, you want with do. that right. advice. You could, I say that to everyone too. You could say, oh, wow, that's insightful. You could say, Nick's a moron. <laughs> Whatever you want to say, like, I'm not going to judge you. Yeah. Just as, you know, everyone's entitled to their own opinion and feelings. Correct. So there was, I find that a lot of people in our general age range, so from the early 20s to the early 30s, that 10 year gap. Yes. People kind of just, I think, I don't know if it's social media, I don't know if it's just life and the need to feel like you have to be doing a certain thing. You have to be at a certain stage by a certain points of life. Okay. I feel like they they demon vilify? Vilify that. Demonfy is not a fucking word. Vilify. Thank you. I feel like they vilify and they make it a bad thing to stay where you're from. I was just gonna say that. And this it's, is my first time leaving my hometown. And that's fine. Okay. I, I, but yeah. I feel like they're just like, yo, if you don't leave your hometown, you you're you're doing yourself a disservice and there's so much out there. You're like, yeah, okay, I travel. Yeah. I travel for work. Agreed. I travel for vacations. Does me staying, maybe not my hometown, but my home state, county, state, yes. whatever, that Agreed. makes me bad? Or th there's so much, there's so much of a stigma there. I think that bad is the is the wrong word. I think you just need to explore. But it's not like bad if you stay home. Well, they act like it is. They yes, act they like act it is like on social. Yes. Nah, go some go to a, the middle of nowhere and start a name for yourself. It's like, yeah, that's great. I'll go to Nebraska. I'll be like, what the fuck is going on here? I gotta get out of this place. So there's so many friends of mine that have left. Yes. And they're like, fuck New York. Fuck Long Island. This place sucks. I hate it. And they come back in a year. I have like a hate love with New York. And everyone does because yes. you're from here. Yes. Correct. And you know the amazing parts of it and you know the bad parts of it. Yeah. Because there's so much good. Yes. You got that. And whether you utilize it or not, it's a different story, but you have Connecticut, Massachusetts, you have the city, 
you have Jersey, Hoboken, all that. Yep. You have the South Shore in the summer, which nothing beats the South Shore I, in the I summer the for South that. Shore. Yeah. I mean, if you're if you're out on the water and the boats, it's a great time. It's to me, it's just amazing. And then you have the Hamptons, and then you have the North Fork, right. and then you have an international hub for anywhere in the world in JFK. A lot of places don't have that. That's true. I so, do love JFK. That's what I'm saying. So, like, yeah, you're a jet setter. You're out there doing your thing. So it's – I just hate the 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 stigma like, oh, you got to get out of here. You got to yes. get out of here. But then they come back. And I'm like – and they're like, yeah, I had to come back. You know, I missed it or the money wasn't the same, whatever. I'm like, that's cool, man. Why are Which you – Yeah, it's Why are you upset you about it? Back, like, it's okay to go explore and then come back. And if it didn't work, you come yeah, back. Yeah, no. That's my, that's my message. Yes. My message is – my message <laughs> – I got to point them out. My message is – it's okay to explore. Correct. It's okay to come back. <laughs> think that it's going to be better somewhere else because yes. it might be, yeah. but it might not be. Right. And if it's not, it's cool. Come back. So my message to you is if you and Vic want to come back, you guys come back because I'm going to miss you. I know. Literally everyone's so upset. I feel like, I don't know. I feel weird. I'm like, guys, like, I can fly back. You can fly <laughs> like, back. It's not you a big fly, deal. We can fly down to you. How many times have you, like, actually seen someone, like, every freaking day? No, it's, like, maybe once a month, twice a month. And if you go to the gym, okay, it's a different story. But, like, I'll fly back. Yeah, <laughs> like, we'll it's really not a big deal. Yeah, like, FaceTimes. I talk to everybody yeah. constantly. I mean, how how intertwined are we because of social media? Exactly. And just... It's, like, how much are you really going to miss out? Like, yeah. I'm going to be there. Like, I just want to, like, go see the weather, see if, like, there's a really big money difference. Um, just, you know, I'm an, an accountant. So obviously like, I want to see like, how much can you really make or save? Um, New York is expensive. I don't see myself buying a home in New York. I'm sorry. That's the one thing that I don't, the prices are insane unless you go to Suffolk. Yep. And I don't want to be all the way out there. That's what I'm saying. You're so far away from everything, but Nassau is insane. So it's like, all right, let's try Florida. Cause it's like a little, anyway, you know, everyone from New York went to Florida. Mm -hmm. So you're going to go down to Boca and just see everyone from New York mm -hmm. over there. Well, so, at least you would think so be with the way that they said everyone <laughs> fleed the state because the traffic is the same, if not worse. I know. Uh, so everyone left, but evidently they came back. Well, that that's the thing. So everyone left, but everyone from the city went to Long Island. Yep. So the city is dead, but now Long Island's still popping. Traffic's still the same. And everyone left for Florida. The Hamptons traffic was always bad when I was a salesman yes. out in the Hamptons. Yeah. It was always horrific. And now, though... it. You'd have pockets of it. You'd have a, a couple hours in the morning and that. No, now it's just year round. That's what I noticed. I was year always like, round. I was always like 10, 11 o'clock. I'm like good to do things. Cause like, obviously I don't work now, but anyway, I'm like, all right, like I have time to do something. No, there's traffic all the time. There's never like a good time to be like, oh, like, let me go somewhere. I think the worst time is still five o'clock, but like traffic is all the time. I've oh, yeah. never seen empty road. I have to go back to Tony's to shoot some more stuff for the store. Speaking of. Yeah. Speaking of shouts to hummus. Love y'all. Um, I have to go back to the store. I, I was going to try to do it today, but like by the time we wrap and shit like that, traffic's going to be wild. Like to no. get down to Lindenhurst from Roslyn, no. it'll be a nightmare. And that's the worst part going from North, North Shore to South Shore. And if you're not from New York and you're listening to this and you don't understand this. Yes, we're sorry. <laughs> we're, we're sorry, number one. Number two, we're giving you insider tips. Yes, correct. So if you it's come to visit Long us, Island, yeah. oh my God, it's over. If yes. you're trying to go north to south later in the day, or you might as well just charter a helicopter. I think either, it doesn't matter which way you go, really. East to west, too, is the same thing. East to west is horrible. Home from the city, so. When I did a couple of shoots for Bronson in Brooklyn, I would leave at, he wanted me there because he was training at like eight in the morning. So I'd leave my house at like six. Which was good. Yeah, but it'd take me an hour and a half, two hours to get there. Okay. And then he would stop training at like 10, 11, and I'd still catch that traffic on the way back. I'm like, because all the people who go really early to work in the city are done by like that time. Yeah. I'm like, so like you're still catching people. I'm like, what is going on? I just got to invest in one of those helicopters, just landing on <laughs> rooftops. Be like, ah, Nick's here. No, I don't need another camera. I need to start saving for a helicopter. That's what, that's what I got to do. What about Uber helicopter? Isn't that still a thing? Um, bl blade? Or is it not a thing? Blade. I could have sworn that was a thing once. I'm looking it up. Blade. I think it's called Blade. <laughs> and then we're going to get back to you. Hold on. Uh, what do I type? Charter or helicopter? I don't know. I thought it was like Uber. I'm totally wrong, aren't I? Nah, I think you're right. Uh, charter or helicopter? Damn, I'm about, to, I'm about to get some crazy ads on my Instagram now. Oh, <laughs> just the ads are just going to say, oh, you got it like that? Okay, here's a helicopter. <laughs> here's a helicopter. New York. Your podcasts are that good, huh? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Listen, if any helicopter companies want to sponsor the podcast, I'll, I'll, I will ha more than happy. We'll have people from all over just like pop in. Blade. Yeah, blade.com. Seaplane and helicopter charter in New York City. 
So I thought it's a thing. Yeah. There you go, Nick. Just Sorry. Oh, that's good. That's a good. That's a good sign on their on their homepage. Sorry, uh, the video doesn't exist. So maybe it's not a thing. I'm supposed to be able to trust them to fly me in a helicopter. <laughs> they can't even keep up to date with videos on their website. No, nah, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'll drive. I'll drive. Anyway. Back to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I actually was curious. You said you started getting momentum with social media and everything in right. 2017. Yes. What was that like? Like the attention kind of all eyes on you as it started to pour in? Because obviously you weren't used to that prior. Right. No, that was technically that was my first time. This time around, it was kind of like, okay, I've done this before. Like, I know how it works. Last time, it was kind of like a trial and error sort of thing. It's kind of like when you... Yeah, you just try it out and see how it works. But I was, like, super nervous for everything. I didn't know how, like, contracts work. Like, I didn't know, like, my worth, really. Um, but it was cool. I also felt special because, like, it was really, like, early back then. So, like, it, it wasn't a bunch of influencers. Like, it wasn't a thing. People weren't making that much money off of Instagram. Um, yeah, and I, I still gave it up. Even though I felt super special, I still gave it up. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So... <laughs> I guess there's a fine line as well, and you could probably talk on this, is a fine line of enjoying the attention yes. and the increased exposure that you're getting now, but just not letting it get to your head. That's how I feel this time around. This time around, because it's, it's, it's so much more monumental? Yes. So, like, because, like, I didn't even want it to happen last time. I, like, wanted it to happen this time. It was just kind of like I fell into it. So, definitely, I don't get it. I don't let it get to my head. I still treat myself as like anyone else. I still see myself as like I work like a normal nine to five and I'm still an auditor in the back of my head. Um, Which is easier said than done because I'm yeah. sure, you know, you're getting DMs, whether nice or bad. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it <laughs> somewhat good. Bro. You're getting you're getting tons of DMs from people that are just all over your all page. Day, yeah. And whether it's and business a job, whether it's business inquiries, whether yep. it's people being fucking creeps, whether it's anything like, cause it's just the influx of just constant need to monitor now. Correct. And, uh, you know, as you continue to grow, it's only going to get worse, better, worse, <laughs> better kind of. So what was your first contract that you signed up on? Ooh. Um, Ooh, I started with a supplement company and that was actually, I didn't even sign with them. I was just Someone asked me to come in for a photo shoot, and that's how I started. And at that time, it was, like, a no-name again. Um, and then, yeah, that's when the TikTok started, and everyone wanted to sign me. So who did I go with? VMI. Yes. yes. Shouts to Nikki yes. Karolakis. Yes. Shouts. VMI. Um, I, Oh, Bombshell. I was with Bombshell Sportswear for a while. I became one of their models. That was sick. That was a really cool experience, by the way. Um, Talk about it. Who else? Talk about it. <clears throat> Talk well, about it. what was the experience I think like? That was, that was my first time being flown out as an influencer. And like, I was like super nervous. Like I was going by myself, which I ended up meeting my boyfriend there in California and we hung out together, but it was like really nerve wracking, but really cool at the same time. Um, just like what an experience, but no, there was, they were really, really cool. Um, yeah, it was good. Are you still with them time. or no? No, no, no. I'm with okay. Dark Sport now. Oh, that's right. So... The year ended, and now it, going into 22, I signed with Get Raw. So, obviously, Seabum's whole line and Raw's, and then Revive, Dark Sport. I have Hummus. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> He's all my, my food sponsor. Um, I have Fit Jeans. I have Wolfpack. Um, who am I forgetting? I have Jim Reapers. Oh, my God. Got to get a scroll. Hold on. <laughs> Let me clear this desk off for you. <laughs> You can start writing down the sponsors. We'll we'll be gonna be here for a few. <laughs> I think I think that's everyone. And so, so what what is it like? Really, I mean, a lot of people don't know the feeling because they 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 try to get to your status. Oh yeah, for their entire lives, and they never they never reach that. Whether it's because they want to be financially secure, whether it's because they want to be noticed, and they would just want to be in the spotlight. You know, or a combination of everything. They don't. Yeah. What does it feel like? You know, just like explain something like that because. It's probably yeah. I yeah. get I get this question a lot. So everyone's like, "How do I get sponsored?" So it's not like a simple answer. And I feel like everyone forgets that. Okay, so I'm an influencer, and I going back to I influence people. So my recommendation is build a following, have your people trust you, and be like, "Oh, she knows what she's talking about," or he, whatever it is. Tr like, have your people trust you, then believe in a product. 
obviously use them and show them that like you're true to that one product and then the sponsorships will come along but everyone's like trying or like tagging like 10 different like sponsorships trying to just get one because they want the attention or they want the following like it shouldn't be like that the first number one is focusing on yourself and your platform and just like having your followers believe in you so I feel like that was that's a big thing too like I help a lot of girls along the way or guys too I get dms about training or food or whatever it is and I try to answer to everyone I feel like that's what makes them trust me more and then I influence them to buy things which again it's not a bad thing I'm, I'm making it sound like so bad it's not a bad thing I help them it, like I use the word influence because I'm an influencer but like I'm helping people um just because they generally like don't know they don't know where to start especially like getting into the fitness world they have literally no idea but being sponsored is like truly a blessing um like I'm always stocked on clothes, um, supplements, food, uh, which is like a major help. I feel like everyone forgets that. Like the meal meal prep is like amazing sponsor. If you ever get a sponsorship for food, that's like you're good to go. Especially now. Yeah, I mean, everyone, a, everyone wants like a pack of chicken yeah. breasts is t- is almost that's 20, what I'm trying to twenty dollars. Everyone forgets that part that like the food is like number one, and like Tony's food is obviously amazing. So um, truly a blessing. You save a lot of money. Um, Speaking on the background, yeah, you save a lot of money. Like yeah. I'm like, I don't have to go to the grocery store. No, like, you gotta listen. You gotta you gotta embrace it. Like yes, it's not. It's, it's hard to like be like that because I'm like a humble person. But like that was like me with rain. It's like, awesome. when, I, when I'm doing the stuff with, <laughs> when I'm doing the stuff with rain, they send me the fridge. They send me cases of drinks. It's like I made a I made a video. It's like yo, I I do buy the rains yes, at, the, at seven. I'm not always at my office. Those aren't just for me. But They're that's for my you, guests. That's you genuinely believing in the product. You still going out there and buying it. And that's what I do with a lot of stuff. Yeah. So like, let's say dark sport. I don't get every single piece of clothing, but like when there's something that I really like and I know that I'm not going to have it, I'm still going to go and buy it. You know what I mean? Because I, I truly believe in whatever their clothes or their message or same thing with the food. Like I'll go in and buy hum- hummus. Like it, hummus I'm also a firm fit, believer. Yeah. Hummus fit. I'm also a firm yeah. believer when I say like, you know, dark sport brain hummus their success is my success correct like it all like i want them to do well as well like because i continue to do well and then we all you both grow exactly and that's another thing too speaking back with the sponsorships it's like everyone wants to go with a big name brand you don't have to like if you truly believe in a product help them grow like be a part of their name and like just show everyone else that okay like let's buy into that product because it's going to be amazing so you don't have to, again, go into like a big name just because everyone else is doing it. And I'm sure you had a lot of offers for. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, you, and how did you narrow down to, I, pr- I know the answer mentally just because yes. I speak to a lot of athletes, but how did you ma- narrow down that field to dark sport, raw? Like, so I, f- like, I feel like it's, you kind of get to a point where it's like, you're tailoring, like you're, you're choosing for yourself. Like what is the real you? So like Bombshell obviously love their clothes as well as Dark Sport, but I feel like Dark Sport is more me. It's more towards the bodybuilding brand, which is, and I also don't like colors. <laughs> Sorry, all I wear is black. <laughs> love it, it. love like, it. I don't wear bright colors. It's just more of a me feel. Um, I love the whole wolf thing, like especially because I have a dog. Like it's just, there's more to it. Same thing with like Sebum and even like my food sponsor, because I had like a couple of more options with that. It's like whatever you like more at that point, because like you have so many offers. So like you can literally just be like, oh, no, I feel like going with this one. Which is nice. Yeah. <laughs> Which is nice. <laughs> Again, I Which feel like nice. I'm bragging. No, it's not at not, all. It's yeah, no. Listen, it's aligning your needs yes, and your correct. preferences with the companies that give the best outcome. Because it, it doesn't always have to, like you're saying, it doesn't always have to be financial. No. You know, you don't always have to go with the biggest offer. There's correct. a lot of people that just dollar value. Oh, they're the offer me the most great. But then you don't believe in the product and you don't care. And that happens to so many athletes that I see all the time. They're constantly switching because they don't believe in the brand. So they have all this money. But if you don't believe in the brand, then how are you going to promote it? You genuinely just don't like it and you don't post about it. And it becomes an issue. And then you Just lo- to make the five measly posts that you're supposed to make a month. It, which a lot of people are coming off of that too. But like, oh, what was I going to say? Yeah, like you just genuinely you don't, don't genuinely don't it. like it. Yeah, yeah, you don't like it. You're not gonna want to post, and then you end up losing. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. So once you lose that sponsorship, or you end up switching, everyone's like, "But I thought you believed in that brand." And once again, you're losing that following, sort of say that like you actually influence or like the people that trusted you, and now they're like, "What do you mean? You just made me buy this," and now that you're saying this is great, 
So like, you don't want to do that to your followers either. That's why I'm saying like, you have to build a relationship with your followers. I hate to say it, but there are a lot of influencers out there that have like a cult and it's because they have that one-on-one where like they trust each other. And that's like evidently what everyone wants. Like you want people to believe in you and your products and everything that you sell. Yeah. That's how, that's how John Meadows was. Yes. John Meadows, super transparent, straight to the point, willing to give all of his knowledge base out, help people along the way. He had his own supplement brand, but he, he like pushed it, but he didn't. Mm -hmm. He just said, this, you know, I take my own stuff. This is the stuff that I take. My BCAA is my straight up. And, and he's just straight up about his intra workout, his peri workout nutrition and what he, what supplements he takes before then he was with, um, he had, he had a deal with prime nutrition where they kind of worked together and then that fell apart. Um, <laughs> I don't want to throw anybody on the bus, but <laughs> <laughs> let's not throw anyone under. Yeah. The bus. It's not, it wasn't Meadows fault. I'll say that. But, um, you know, he had that deal and then he was still writing for T nation and he still recommended other products. It was just, yeah. that's how you get that authenticity. You get the, Correct. you know, Oh, he's consistent with his last viewpoints for the last 10 years. Like, yes, there's something that's changed. like, he may have had a couple of companies <clears throat> along the lines, but he still pushed like, Oh, the, that ingredient that he's been saying for 10 years, like it's in this one. That's why he's talking and about that's it why now. People loved him. Yeah. People, people don't, I see it all the time too. It bothers me. It bothers me. People just <laughs> fucking signing contracts as a sign them. And it's great. Yeah. And it's awesome. And I think that's great that you're getting a bag as Dre would say, but you know, you just don't, your, your followers are watching. Right. So they see you switch up every year. And people forget that. And it's like, yo, I, I was, I was forming brand loyalty with the last brand because of you, not because of the brand itself. Yep. And they don't, they don't understand that that influencer term, that's really what that is. Yeah. You lose, you lose that entire following. Now, do you find that they lose the credibility? Because I do. I find that you lose yes. that credibility and then I can't trust you now. Correct. I just think you're wishy washy. So. I mean, I'm new in the game. Once again, like, I, I think I've only Are been you? at this for a year. Nah, but yes. you've been in the, which we well, haven't covered yet, and we're going to go back to it. You've been in the industry for how long? Not really. Well, 2017 was maybe again only six months, so I'm still new. 16? You started, but like, how long have you been training? And oh, okay. that's what I'm saying. Like, training yes. and being in the industry to like prep for things and get into yeah. it. How long has that been? Ooh. I mean, we can go way back. We're going to. This is this is the segue. <laughs> so, like, I guess you could say it started in high school. Um, I really wasn't popular. So I was, you know, I wasn't the guy's favorite. Um, I was overweight. So that's where it kind of, like, started kicking in, um, especially with sports and stuff. Like, I obviously wasn't as good as the other athletes, maybe because of my weight. I um, started weight training, obviously lost some weight. My looks were a little better. I just got really into the gym. Um, what drove you at first, though? Was it more of a you want to be noticed more look-wise, or do you want to just be lose the weight and just be healthy, or is it a combination? I think it was a combination of both, to be honest. I just wanted to feel more comfortable myself, and then it kind of become it became an addiction. So right off the bat, after senior year going into college, I got really into weightlifting, and yeah, that was, what, 2016? So again, 2016, 2017, that's when I blew up my Instagram um, at that time. And again, it was just me training. Like there was nothing much more to it. Um, so that's when I started and I was really young in the game. So I was what, 18 years old. Mm -hmm. Uh, now think about that though. Six, six to seven years ago. Yep. You're not, you're not, you, you may be new in the popularity scene. I was going to say new to like the influencer game, but not new to the lifting. But you've had your finger on the, you've had your finger on the pulse of the actual industry for a while now. Correct. Which is good. Yes. Because it teaches you a lot prior like, cause if you just jump, if you just posted your first selfie and all of a sudden for some reason it blew up, yeah, then like, you're like totally then, new. Then you have no idea what's going on. No. You have no idea how no. bullshitters bullshit and you have no idea the supplement companies and how they're going to try to use you for your image. And yeah. this, uh, you just got to, it was kind of like I was thrown in at 2017. I pulled back and then I just watched from the outside. <laughs> yeah, it's good. And then I was like, all right, let me jump it back in. <laughs> she's on, she's on, yeah. She's like, eh, let me see this shit right here. Right, it's good. Jump, jump. <laughs> all right, let's do it. Fuck it. Let's, we, we, we in Boys now. Boys fall in. <laughs> we in, we in. <laughs> So now let me ask you this. So going from being <clears throat> overweight, because I was as well. Yep. Uh, still am right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm a little No, Joe, okay. please. You got a core. I I, I got to have one ab. That's all I wanted for the summer. <laughs> I didn't even get that. Um, I was supposed to be shredded by now, but it's okay. <laughs> ah, screw it. It's almost winter again. Well, you you for you, it's different. But for me, <laughs> I, I'm just going to bundle up like Cartman from South Park. No one's going to see. I'm going to put a parka on, and it's done. 
Um, <laughs> so going from being overweight and then obviously yeah. getting ready for the shows, what was that? Because you got you became addicted. Yes. What was that mindset like? Because it's a different animal to just lose yes. weight and get in shape yeah. versus oh, I got to step on stage and I right. got to mentally psych myself up. So I feel like there's it's. I, I like to say that there is a balance, but there isn't. So when I was just losing weight, it was like, okay, like eat good during the week. And if I wanted to, you go enjoy time with family, time with friends. Um, <clears throat> it was a totally different ball game. You still get to enjoy life, sort of say. Mm -hmm. um, losing weight, yes, it's difficult. And like, you don't have to try as hard as prep. I don't want to like make that sound bad, but like losing weight is like relatively easier than going on prep. Mm -hmm. So I was in the weight game for a long time and obvious, I don't even know, like there wasn't one person that I like, like looked up to and I was like, oh, I want, I want to compete. That, that was never the thing. I just like wanted to be lean. That was it. And I kept doing it, kept doing it. And then again, fell into the bodybuilding world and I kept getting leaner and leaner. And I was like, all right, I think I'm, I'm good. Like I can start going into that whole prep mode and stuff on stage. But that's me in prep mode is like. I can't really hang out with anyone. I'm not fun to be around. Um, and that's the only reason why I think I've struggled with going on prep again, <clears throat> because I feel like I have to isolate myself so much and I kind of like lose those relationships, which once again, now that I'm an influencer, you have to be okay with talking to everyone whenever it is. Like this, like, let's say like if I was in prep right now and I'm like, oh, okay, like, let me come on the podcast. Maybe I'd be a little more miserable than I am right now. <laughs> but again, like you run into people at the gym and like that's happening to me now too. Um, people come up to me like, oh, you're Sabrina. And like, you have to be friendly. You can't be in the, oh no, I got to go to cardio. Oh no, I got to get my meal in. Like you have to, again, build that relationship with your following and make sure that you're approachable. And like, that's why I give all the credit to like people who go to the Olympia and they do the meet and greets and they're still okay with talking to people and they're not miserable. So all the credit in the world to them, because I don't know how they do it. But me again, in prep is like a different, it's a different animal. I'm not myself. I'm not pleasant to be around. Most people aren't. <clears throat> no, I'm, I'm really not. So, and, sh so, and I want you to continue. Because I'm food driven. I, I, I'm food driven too. It was tough for me to give up yes, everything. It, it really it was. It is hard. Yeah. Um, so one of the most amazing people, I was a fan for a long time, <clears throat> of Juji. You know Juji Mufu? I don't. Oh, uh, okay. Do you want to? We'll have to set that up. <laughs> okay. I, I love Juji. I was so happy when, he was, when, when I got to work with him through Rain. Okay. So I met him at a couple of shoots. Actually, I met him before before Rain. So years when I was 2012, when I was watching Antoine Viant, and I was watching Antoine I'm get so ready. So bad with this, I don't know names. That's okay. No, no, no. That's okay. That's okay. You definitely know. So you don't know Juju off the top no, of your head. No. That's okay. You definitely know him by face. Uh, he does all the flips and crazy shit. That's Juju. You ever seen him before? And if you yes. haven't, yeah, okay. yeah, okay, right, right, right. yeah. I was gonna I say, don't if you haven't, don't, don't feel, yep. don't feel. No, so, I know. I know, I know. so. Juju used to do all the tricking stuff, like flips and whatnot, with Antoine back 2012. I used to watch their YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. And Antoine I was, was a big motivation and inspiration for me because I'd watch his videos and I'd, I'd get psyched up for my lifts. I loved Animal, the company. Like I just, it, it was just, it aligned with me and mentally and how I trained and how I wanted to live my life and look. Right. And then over the years, I still watched Juju's stuff. But like, you know, time passes and you start, work and life gets in the way and this and that. So once I started doing videos, one year I was at the Arnold with Kai, the first time I went with him. This is in 2000, I want to say this is like 2016. No, because I didn't do videos back then. <laughs> this is 2000, no, no it's not, uh, 2018. Okay. First Arnold I went to, I went with Kai and we're at- Which is oh, sick, by the way. I love Kai, he's great. Um, we're at a Lifetime Fitness outside because he didn't want to be bothered by people when he's training. And- um, not because he doesn't want to say hi to, because he'll say hi to every person. But like after he's been at the booth all day, he's got to just like be able to just decompress. And the fine line. Yeah, he's got to be able to decompress, just train. Because people still come up to him. They know him. And he's, he's one of the nicest guys. So he'll stop his workout. He'll take a selfie. He'll talk. You know, his manager, I always laugh because whenever his manager's with us, he has to play the bad guy. He's like, okay, okay, we got right. to gotta get back to like going, doing our stuff. Some people don't know the fine line. They don't understand that you guys are people. Like, right. okay, you're pretty. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're pretty. You're in good shape. Whatever. Yes. And people want to come over and talk to you. Like, there's an aura about you. Like, they see you and they follow you. And they see your presence on a daily right. basis. But And they think they know you. 
And that's fine. And they want to come up to you. And they want to come up to you. And they and want to be your to friend. Be okay and they go, oh, fuck, can you follow me? Like, I hear yes. shit like that all the time. It's like, it, n- no. <laughs> like, I don't know yeah. you. Like, I know you feel like you know me because you see so much of my life. And that's that's fine. But the people that are, like, the fans, they have to know that balance. Right. So, anyway, we go we go to the Lifetime. And then Juji was there with his, with his buddy. And I just, like, I looked at him. And he, he's talking to Kai. And then he looks at me. He's like, what's going on, man? I said... You know what, dude? I just gotta say, I've been a fan of yours for a long time, man. Twenty twelve. Yeah. I used That's to watch your. Sick. I said I used to watch your videos. Uh, you know, of you and Antoine back. Uh, <laughs> Nuclear Summer Four was like the, one of the video names. He goes. I gotta give you a hug. So like that's because that's before he was famous, yes. like really well known. So, anyway, I see him there, and then I see him a couple of like a year later. I just say hey to him again, whatever. And then with the whole rain thing, I got I got flown out with Kai. I'm shooting with him, and I and Juju was there. I was like, "Yo, I don't know if you remember me, this and that." And then after that, we become super tight. Like we talk all the Isn't time. That crazy. Yeah, we talk all the like, time. Like he's gonna be coming to the New York area at some point. He's gonna hopefully jump on the podcast. Like just chop it up with me. But it's like the 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 point that I'm trying to make is I've been around a lot of athletes. Juju and Kai, but Juju is like one of the best people. I've ever seen interact with fans like the best he could be in prep. He could be doing any, and yep. he will run himself to the ground in terms of just energy wise and just being so exhausted from saying hi to as many people as he can at the expos that the, at the last Arnold, he, I think it was like an hour after the rain booth already closed and he's on the side and his line is down the alley. Like the, the you can't even see the end of it. And I said to him, I said, yo, do you want me to have security just walk you out of here so you get out of here? He goes, he's like, you know, I appreciate that, Nick. He goes, but like in all due respect, he goes, every single person that came here to shake my hand and say hi to me, he's like, I'm going to shake every single hand till I leave. Which is awesome. And I'm just like, damn, bro, you're awesome. Like, you're yes. great. Mm-hmm. I, because, you know. And I give them all the credit in the world. It's so hard. People don't understand that. No, they don't. Because after I see these guys and these girls after, you know, all you guys after, and everyone's just mentally just drained, drained. from a new conversation every five seconds and shaking hands and posing and this and that. It's a, it's you so should, much like n- now that I'm on C bums team, yeah. seeing him after the events, I feel so bad, uh-huh. but he will wait. Yeah. The Texas one was bad. That was like, Oh, I'm sure s- six hours long. And he stood there and like, you just have to see him after it's like, it's like, give him an energy bar, give him something. Yeah, like, just like, you know, the man just needs to chill. Yeah. I actually busted into his tent when he was taking pictures <laughs> with fans. I, I don't know him. So, but I bust, He's a great guy. I, I, I've heard nothing but great things about him. Yeah. I busted into his tent cause I couldn't find Kai yeah. at the Arnold. <laughs> so like, they're like, yeah, I think Kai's in there. I literally kicked the tent, like the, the, the things <laughs> open and he's standing there posing with, with, um, fans. And then the, his, his team is sitting right there and I go, huh? I said, you're not Kai. <laughs> and they go, no, I go. Anybody know where he is? And they go, nope. I go, all right, I'm out. I just walked away. I was like, thanks, guys. Should have been like, hey. Yeah, <laughs> the but just the way I hey. kicked the thing open, I look, I go, yeah, no one's Kai in here. <laughs> mm, okay, wrong tent. No, I have to give them all. Even like Laura Lee, which I've gotten really close with her from last year, Bombshell, and like even now, like training with Aldo, um, Laura Lee's great too. And she will tell me, like, she'll, she likes to go to expos and spend 20 minutes, like, or so talking to the people. And like, if she doesn't, she gets upset. Which is like amazing to me, like because like they're di- I've seen her at the Olympia. Like I'm like, you're literally on no food. <laughs> How are you talking to people? Super difficult. <laughs> it's super difficult. And listen, it's Kai too. Kai. I mean, it's it, I I can't say that I'm going to be there, but like if I do, I hope that I get to be like them and like spend the time to talk to people and not let it get to my head. I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I gotta be honest with you. I mean, you're. I knew, you know, we knew each other in the gym, but we never yes. really interacted. This right. is probably the longest we've ever interacted. To be honest with you. <laughs> like besides our shoots, that our little shoots that we've done, like actually no, speaking to one another, yeah. this is probably the most we've ever interacted. Yeah, you got a very level head. Like you, you yeah. really do. You're yeah. not, you're not gassed up. You're yeah. not. You're just very even keeled, and I, and that's the type of people I like to associate with. Yeah. Because the people that gas themselves up mentally, and that's in any profession, any line of work, walk of life, doesn't matter. It's just that you don't want to be around people I like that. I don't see myself there, even though like it did hit me when I was like in Texas and we were at the C-Bum meet and greet and it was like for a bunch of other us, like other people too. But like I was walking down the line and this girl comes up to me almost crying and she's like, I've been waiting to meet you. Like you're my number, like, you know, number one inspiration type of things. And like, that's when I was like, damn, like I am influencing people, but like I still, to me, like I forget it. And then I'm like, oh no, like I'm nobody. But like, that's the time that I was like, Oh wow! Okay, like I'm I'm getting up there. Yeah, 
And like what I say matters and what I do matters. And like people are looking up to me and I have to continue what I'm doing to influence these people and help them with whatever they're going through or what they don't know. And I got to teach them and things like that. You know, you don't have to ever step on stage, right? No, I know. Yeah. Oh, no, I know. Yeah. That's it's just that's a personal goal. Yeah. And like totally my like my followers would love to see me on stage. And like that's something that I do want to do. But it's more of a personal goal. And I don't. It's not like my, yes, I have to. I have to do it every year and I have to be this lean. Like, I just don't see it as that way. Yeah. Again, I love food. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the cool thing about what the way that you're being, not influenced, the way that you're influencing and yes. the way that you're growing your following. You're not growing it based off of stage and stage looks. You're growing it off of, you know, just, just you as a person. Correct. So like- the people that grow their following off of the stage and the stage look, they once, feel like they have to keep doing it. And then once the stage goes away, that's then they're it. Like, eh, all right. Yeah. That's so, it. That was all I was interested for. Yeah. So I think what you have going for you is so much more beneficial to you, Correct. especially in the long run. Yeah. Cause you have so many years of just not only growth personally, but socially and just business wise. Yes. There are so many opportunities. I'm just starting. I exactly. I my 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 saying since I started video in late I quit my job in 2018. So late, congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> late 2017, early 2018. You know, I used to put when I started getting shoots and I started actually shooting people, I used to put all the time. I'm just getting warmed up. Just getting warmed up. That was just always my my catchphrase. And whether people took that seriously or not, or they laughed or whatever, oh yeah, I'm just getting warmed up, like whatever they said. Like I meant that. Even now. Like I'm I'm just getting warmed up. Like, yeah, I, like you don't know what it's going to turn into. No, I have no idea. Like this podcast is just getting warmed up. Like Joe I have, I have the much... next Joe Rogan. <laughs> hey, if it turns out that way, fantastic. If it doesn't, it's okay. I just, my biggest goal, especially with the podcast is just to give people that third party sitting into the conversation. Look at who you are as a person, who my guests are. I was going to say, because no one knows me other than just like, even on YouTube, I haven't really, like, spoke like this. Like, no one knows, like, my persona or, like, how I speak. So this is, like, a good thing, I think. It's a fantastic thing. And I'll <clears> tell yeah, you. no one knows that. And, I, and I'll tell you why. A lot of the, a lot of the females especially yeah. that grow huge followings that I see, they're known as just an ass. Yeah. And you're so much more than that. Yeah, I'm more than just, like, my looks. Like, Yeah, like you have a that. brain. Like, you have yeah. a good personality. You're a good person. Like, there's a lot more to you that needs to be put on spotlight because you have a great figure. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Like, that's awesome. And yeah. it's something that guys drool over and girls aspire to look like Correct. or be. Both of them. And that's fantastic. But no one knows the other side. <laughs> no one knows the mentality. Yeah, your internal thoughts and yeah. how you actually went to college and, and were at a, a, a big four account, right? Yeah, big four. Yep, big big four, four accounting? Yeah. That's what they call it. Okay. Tyler will be very mad at me if I don't get that right because he's an account. He's a uh, recruiter for accounting. Yes. Um, so, you know, there's so much more to put on display and be like, yeah, my looks are great. And, and, and that's, that's what I get upset with, with a lot of the influencers is the sexualization and just like, it's constant and that's okay. Cause sex sells. But I also need that side of people like, yo, this is a human being and they have their own thoughts and they have a lot to bring to the table besides just their looks. Yeah. And that goes men and women. It really does. Like you see some of these people, it's like, okay, but like you have a brain, you got to like show it. But I see going back to like people probably would do that if the algorithm would pick it up, but they don't. Yep. Why? Because sex sells. Yeah. So people start drawing back on the whole brain thing and they're like, all right, let me just put my looks out there because that's the only thing that attracts views. So like, how do you keep the people posting their authentic selves when it, authentic selves when that doesn't hit the views. I think it's a combination. I think it's a it's a very You got to do both. I think it's a very 50-50 split that people have to start doing because then they just sit on the side of the algorithm that is all sex. Correct. Which if that's what you want to do, I'm not going to sit here and say you should or should not do it. Right. Like please by all means. But at the same time it's like you have so much more to offer people and I think when people actually I don't think I know when people actually hear you speak, your viewpoints, how you're looking at endorsements, the stage life yeah, you know, y you have more to offer than just, oh, wow, you know, his abs look great on this post. Like, oh, the girl's going, oh, damn, I wish that was my boyfriend or whatever. Or the, and the swiping and then there's a girl. Oh, great. Look at her ass. Like, oh, my God. Like, oh, yep. I wish that was my girlfriend. Like, 
there's so much more to more offer to on a genuine level. I think there has to be a 50-50 split and people just kind of sit on one side or the other. So they don't get any engagement with the regular stuff or yeah. they get too much engagement with the sexual stuff. I swear to God, if you throw up right now, I'm going to lose it. Because <laughs> I heard him have the hiccups before and that usually happens when he's hungry. If you throw up right now, he's got that, he's got that face on. Don't do it. Go get he's just tired. I don't know. We'll see. I heard him have that. Whenever he has the hiccups, he didn't eat a lot this morning. Whenever he has the hiccups, his stomach's empty. He gets hunger pains. You can usually, um, I hate to say it, but feel it. Their stomach like floats up. Sorry, I, I, I my dog does that, and that's he, how he I, retches. He does the retching. He, he does the yeah. So yeah. I feel, I feel his stomach, and I'm like, I know when he's gonna throw up. Yeah, he's laying down. We're good. We we we, we bought ourselves some time. <clears throat> anyway, but that's why I want to do YouTube. And like, I can't get into the habit of like literally doing it all the time or editing because I'm like, this is where I show my other side. Yeah. This is the only part where people will actually like watch more than just my look. So question, listen why, don't, to me. why don't you start a podcast? Honestly. There are a lot of people doing that. There are. And the reason is because it serves. And I tell, <laughs> if you listen to my shit regularly, <laughs> I told Steve and Dana to start a podcast. I tell everyone Steve to. And Dana. Um, my, my last two guests. Got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Um, just, I, I tell everybody to because it's double, it's spearheading content. So you now have audio platform content listeners right. that just want to have something in the background in their car, on the Stairmaster, whatever, that they don't want to watch something. You have clips that you could just cut, which don't get me wrong, it takes a lot of effort. But you have clips that you can cut because you set video cameras up and you can do it like that. And then on top of all that, you have full episodes where you actually get to talk about topics that mean something to you. Right. So you have three forms of content right there from one sit down. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So start a podcast. Talk about things that mean something to you that you want to let your, your, your followers know, whether it's things inside the industry, how to lose weight, how to build your glutes. Like there's a I million idea. There's a million and one things. And guess what? Your sponsors are going to love it. That's true. Your sponsors are going to love it. They're going to be like, oh, I feel like this is a little more normal than getting in front of a camera and holding it and like vlogging. It is. That's very hard for me. It's it's hard for I that, like this is easier than being like, hey guys. That's how I started. <laughs> I started vlogging. I started that's hard with my camera. I bought a camera because I wanted to make a YouTube video and channel about right. my journey in the fitness industry and how I know all the pros. So you I, started how all we started. I started in 2017. Basically. Yeah. I started in 2017. That's when I first got my first camera. Yeah. And then my ex asked me to make a video for her at the gym. I made I made one. And he came out sick. And it, it was good for what it was. It was good <laughs> for not ever editing like that before. Yeah. It was okay. And then all the pros started asking me for shit. And the supplement company started asking me for shit. And, and then, then it became, I was really booked good? up with amateurs every weekend. So you literally just fell into it. I fell into it. I I had, I had I never picked a camera up before 2017. I had no wow, idea. So you never even had like a little like want to be behind the camera? No. Never. Wow. Never. Nope. See, like, I always liked photography. I've taken classes on it and everything. I love it. Yeah, no. But I never actually, like, did anything about it. <laughs> yeah, no. I never did. And you fell into it. I just fell into do it. Do you love it? Uh, I do love it. Uh, okay. it's, it's It's um, it's an interesting question. See, she's interviewing me now. I like that. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you why it's a tr it's a tough question. Well, I I expect most photographers always wanted to be photographers. I've never heard someone be like, no, I fell into it. I just fell into it. I was good at it, and it just kind of happened. And I had my own vision, my own way. And when everyone was ripping each other's styles off and, oh, this guy shoots like that. Oh, I got to have my videos be exactly like him. And then that guy would put a tutorial out. This is how I shoot my videos. Do it. And then every – like, you ever notice that every Texas videographer, their styles look the same? Yes. Everybody from Texas, it looks the same. Yeah. Yeah. Dude named Lobo. I don't know. He probably doesn't watch my shit. Maybe someone will send this to him. I don't know. We both kind of started at the same time. He's very good at what he does. He's very good. He started or he started with um, I was with Flex Lewis. He was with Dana Lynn Bailey. He used to shoot all the Flag and Fail stuff. Dana Lynn Bailey. Yeah. D Dana Lynn and Rob are awesome. I was with them in Utah. Not with them. I was with Kai and them in Utah a couple months ago. But he was their videographer. And he was able to kind of set himself aside and, and create his own style. He did a lot of speed ramps. He did a lot of like, hold the weights up here. I'll walk around you, make it look like time froze, put a high pitched sound in the background. It was cool. It was catchy. It's gimmicky. Yes. Not, not how I like to shoot. I like to shoot more story. I like to shoot, why are we, you know, not to say that his isn't, I'm not trying to sound like I'm talking shit, but I like to shoot more along the lines of like, what's the purpose of this video? Are we trying to invoke emotion? Are we trying to showcase before a show? Like, what's the reason behind it? 
And I've actually started to get back to my roots on that as of late because you get tied up where you want to get views and you want to have your shit kind of stand see out. See where I mean. Yeah, so you kind of start adapting your style to look similar to the others that are getting views. And then you have to kind of reset yourself. So, Which is everything, by the way. Yeah, everything in life. Everything. Um, so, so yeah, so he started doing that and getting a lot of popularity, especially because all the flag nor fail people were... Trucker Nick came out. Trucker Tr Nick. Trucker Nick. In uh, intensity. Jamal shouts, I love you. Before it was like New York, and now it's like... Yeah, 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 yeah. Trucker, Trucker Nick. <laughs> Sorry. Just like Sorry, really. No, this is Dylan <laughs> with the brim of the hat. <laughs> Tight. So... He's very good at what he does. He's, he does really beautiful edits. He does very beautiful color grading. I've always looked at him as somebody that I have to keep up with. Like, he's inspiration for me to keep getting better, pushing, doing my thing. Getting better. Almost like a rival that's not a rival because he's in a different category of his own and I'm in a different category. Like, we just do different things, but someone that I look at, like, I love his stuff. Right. So, but because I love his stuff doesn't mean I'm going to make my shit look like his. Everybody in Texas started shooting the same way. Everybody. I would look at people's videos. I'm like, yo, there is no difference between any of your videos. Do you think that's a template too? <laughs> they just like throw shit in there. I think they look at these videos and they see that they get so much popularity and they just go, fuck it. And then they just do the same shit, which is cool. But I've told guys from New York, I'm like, yo, you got to get your own style. You, you have like, if you like that, I do a certain way or and that that guy does a certain way, like, okay, combine them or do a different or do it differently. Well, I also heard that like, I guess Houston, Texas, every, like, if you upload videos there, it, like, kind of hits the algorithm better, too. So I, I don't know if that has anything to do it with might. everyone trying to do the similar style, but in reality, it's everyone in Houston who are hitting the algorithm. It might. I mean, who knows? The manipulation game on social media with the algorithms and what they want to see versus what you actually want to post, there's a lot of high-end film guys, not, we're not talking, like, what I do, like, on a lower scale. We're talking, like, movie set shit right and they talk about stuff and they talk about how their storytelling process has the algorithm wants them to change it really? the algorithm wants them to make short videos now but they want to go they want to shoot the the stories in the length that they want to right but no, because they're because the videos may be a little bit longer or because the videos may not fit into what the algorithm is looking for even though they are far more talented than yeah. a lot of the other guys that are getting attention, they don't get the attention. So I, they they almost. I believe that's almost the people's fault. Oh, a thousand percent. Because you you have like literally like what half a second to get someone's attention. Yep. If not, they'll just swipe. Mm -hmm. So you have to catch someone's eye in that first little like time frame, and that's it. And like they're not gonna pay attention to like three minutes. I used to do videos that long. I used to do long videos. I used to do videos where I had the athlete sit down and I'd do like a, like a kind of like a podcast. I'd, I'd sit down. And, but it would be a video instead of. And I'd ask them. I'd be podcast. like, you know, what drove you? What, 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 what does it feel like going into the show? And that's, to me, that's always more interesting. Catch, catch, you catch people vulnerable on camera. Not everything has to be, excuse me, not everything has to be a dick measuring contest. Like, yep. oh, I got to, my the last video has got to be a banger. Like I got to lift that. It doesn't always have to be that. No. What, what gets you out of bed? What makes you want to train? Right. Oh, I, I lost I lost so-and-so in my life, and I was devastated, and I needed to just channel my energy into something. No because one will know that. we can always relate to something like that. Mentally, every gym person's fucked up. We're all fucked. We really are. We're all fucked. Sorry, guys. The like, gym is our therapy. Exactly. And we use it as a crutch to deal with life and when there are tragedies in our life yep. and when there's obstacles. And we use this, this medium to channel our energy and do it and whether that's on the side of being too obsessive which it happens and we all go prep. through it you got to catch yourself prep you got to catch yourself we all go through it whether it's being too obsessive or just kind of on the whatever side you have to just like what is your why like wh why are you doing this and i feel like talking to so many people there's so many similarities between everybody yeah I was bullied. I was fat. I was not loved enough when I was a because child. Because there like, really is no answer. It feels good. That's that's the answer. The euphoric feeling of challenging Correct. yourself and doing it. Because there's no like, oh, because of this, because of that. No, you get in the gym, you lift the weight, and then you feel good. That's exactly. Good, period. So now talking like that on camera and, and being vulnerable and explaining to people, like, this is my why, they go, oh, shit, you know what? I feel that way too. But because the attention spans are so much shorter, you can't do that anymore. No. Like I could do a podcast and I could cut clips and I could put the episodes out on YouTube and people watch it. I, 
two hour podcast sometimes, I, three hours, four hours, I never expect somebody to watch the whole thing in a sitting. I really don't. I, I have, yo, y'all better have some better shit to do with your lives. You get it. You got to work. You got significant others. You got a pet. Make sure the pet's got to go out. Unless you put it on in the background and then it's fine. Exactly. Put it on the background or you watch it in increments. Correct. 20 minutes here, 20 minutes, oh, the stairs, whatever. Like whatever your life is. Like it's just meant to like give the insight onto that. But like the videos going back, I think it, to be honest with you, I think it kind of went to the dating apps because the dating apps started. Yeah, you're gonna hear me out. It sounds crazy. Hear okay, yeah, you just totally lost me on here. Go ahead. I'm gonna I'm I'm circle back. Go I ahead, promise. Go ahead. I think the lo- the lack of attention started with the dating apps. Okay. Because think about when the dating apps came out. 2011. By the way, I've never been on a dating app. So like, good I'm- for you. You're not missing anything. It's okay, horrible. Okay. <laughs> it's like landmine city. It's crazy. You're just like walking like this. Oh my god. I hope I don't blow up. Um, when the dating apps came out, prior to that. Long form video, stuff like that. I think videos were up to, oh God. I think they were up to a minute on there, but YouTube was still growing at a significant rate and people were watching full videos. Okay. Once the dating apps came out, what did they introduce? Swiping. Swipe, Mm. swipe, swipe. Oh, she's not hot enough. Next. He's not hot enough. Next. So the attention span. I think the attention span, because I mean, anybody that uses dating apps, you could probably tell me because I use them. On and off. I, I I download it. I get a bunch of matches. And then I don't want to have the same conversation multiple times. So I just delete the app. And I'm just like, I'm just, I'm, I'm enough of this. Come on, ladies. Nick's available. <laughs> I'm available. I'm ready to mingle. But like, you know, I got a cute dog. The dog is the big plus. He's, I mean, he's fucking cute as hell. But the dating apps, I think, cause that swipe, swipe, next, next. Think about it. Relation, like people that are in relationships, they bounce in and out all the time. The next hottest girl or guy for you a swipe away two seconds you could be in a new relationship two seconds you could have a new fuck buddy like it's all right there swipe away swipe away and then what happened yeah tiktok started or actually i, I would say hmm. snapchat stories was really the next one it's there next next it's next next there. next yep. next next <clears throat> oh th- nothing interesting on here next 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 and then st- and then tiktok and then instagram reels and what do you do all fucking day swipe swipe Swipe. Oh, it's not interesting. Not interesting. Not good enough. Not good enough. I could be wrong. I could sound crazy. I might sound crazy right now. I swear I might sound crazy, but I think that- I never had, thought of it that way. I think it has a lot to do with the, the dating apps. I just thought people nowadays just have no attention. Span. Well, I think it started with the dating apps and then those people, because there were so <clears> many <throat> people on the dating apps. You're an outlier. To never be on a dating app, you're an yeah. outlier. So like, I think there were so many people that have used it that they became accustomed to that swiping mentality. Right. And then short videos, quick bursts. How can we reach people and like really interact with them? Quick, 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 quick. And now you see these videos all the time on, um, on Instagram reels. Oh, my last reel didn't get enough. You know, the, the audio that you all use the same audio. My last reel didn't get it. So now I was told to make a shorter one. And then it, it loops back again yes. because now you get double views. So they put a three second video up. What are going to be at half a second soon? Well, that's how I started. I literally used someone else's audio. And then all I did was film literally a clip of me in the mirror, and that's what blew up. And then you, I'll have videos of me editing, like, for an hour or two of, like, me in the gym, like, making it, like, super interesting. Gets no views. Yeah. <laughs> it's the ones that are super simple and, like, super short that always do well. Yep. And I hate that. That's like me with videos. I spent hours editing. Hours editing. <laughs> Got this beautiful storyline. The lighting is perfect. The cameras are crisp. 50 likes. But I put a fucking video of Kenji barking at a buoy in the water. And it blows up. Thousand likes. What? I'm just sitting here. I'm like, what? I have I have one of Rocky literally up. So I made a TikTok for Rocky too. He did really well. Like when he was a puppy, he blew up to like a thousand followers. I was like, all right, Rocky, like we're doing good. It was just a video of him literally like touching broccoli because he was like, what is this? Like, what is this bullshit? Is, yeah, I know. And that one blew up. And I was like, are you kidding? It, but that's what I'm saying. It's that short attention span. It's like people want to see dogs. People want to see food. People want to see traveling. Correct. It's the escape from reality. The aesthetic, I guess, pleasing. Yeah, the escape way. from yeah. reality. Yeah. I mean, besides the dogs, anybody can get a dog technically if you're sane and you're not going to abuse the dog. You, you can get a dog for anybody and just got to put the time in. Right. But like traveling, think about traveling that. How many people just watch people that are travel? I do it all the time. And I'm like, wow, that's beautiful. And yeah. then I'm just like sitting at home. <laughs> no, yeah. And out. then they, they want that. Oh, I, I see. How many times am I going to see a pizza? Is it a pizza? A pizza? A be- it's not a pizza. You can't say it like that. Is it? Or is it? Oh, no. Barcelona is what, I'm, is what I'm thinking of. 
No, yeah, no, that's Barcelona. Because they have the... How do you pronounce Ibiza? Sorry, I don't have that accent. I'm not from Spain. Please hold, people. I feel like there's Pause. a... I feel like you don't just say Ibiza. Am I wrong? Ibiza. Oh, wow, you do. Damn, I sound like an idiot. <laughs> Thanks, Google. Uh... <laughs> I could have sworn it was a visa. I guess I'm thinking of Bar Barcelona. They go Barcelona. <laughs> yeah, because of their accent. Is that why? Correct. So Spain, like people from Spain, I, I don't even think it's an accent. It's just the way that they talk. It has like Barcelona. a... Th and now Google's proving me wrong again. Barcelona. Put Put Barcelona with Spain accent. <laughs> This just derailed. Hold on. No. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> we are looking at how to pronounce the name of this city in Spain. Located Catalonia Autonomous Community. My man's really milking this. How do you go about pronouncing Barcelona? Barcelona. But I told you it's because of the Spain accent. Gotcha. But in English, it's Barcelona and then there's Ibiza. Okay. Well, how many times have you seen Ibiza? Like, Videos, pictures of people partying, and you're just like, damn, I need to be there. Why oh, am yeah, I here? I've said it every time. I'm like, wow, that's definitely something I want to do. Yeah. Well, I that, never do. But that, you get the interaction on those. You get the interaction. I should I should have just posted mad Hawaii pictures when I was down there, like videos. When I was down there, oh, I should have yeah. just put, well, this was in 2016. Yeah, 2015, 2016. I should just post mad videos, man. Come join me. Look at where I am. Like, would have been beautiful. Just showboating everything. It's, it's that, I don't know if people are trying to escape. I don't know if people just, because most people have nine to five. Most people just live the same life every day. They go to work. How boring is that? It's bad. It's bad. I feel like you don't have that really. I mean, I know you have your editing, but like you get to do different stuff every day. Whether it be shooting this person or that person, like you're kind of in the same boat as I am. You're not like a typical nine to five. It's one office and you're Yeah. Boring. No, I'm, I'm, I get to travel around and run around and do a lot of things. I guess this, this ties actually back to the question I didn't answer to you is do I love it? Because we kind of got derailed, which happens on this podcast all the time. We're a, we're a ranting podcast. I think we've, cir we've circled back. We've circled back nicely. Nicely, yeah, yeah. Um, Do I love it? I loved it at first. I still love it, but it becomes different. It becomes a job. Yes. Everything becomes a job. People say to me all the time, they're like, oh my God, you're so lucky you could do what you love. And it's like, oh no, yeah, you're right. I do. But when I first started, I just had to worry about going to a shoot, getting an edit, and being done. When you start to grow, you have your overhead costs and you have larger projects that you need to get out to people and you have invoicing, you have edits to get to, you have it shoots. It a business. You, the busy work is what gets in the way. Sending invoices out, following up on money due. Like when you're every department, you started out as just a camera operator and an editor. Now you're- I'm everything. Yep. I always have been, but as the clients and the money comes in and grows- It's more things- So do the headaches. Of. Yeah. So it's not that I don't love it. It's just that I'm at a point now where I need people underneath me. I, I'm looking. Which is a great thing. Great thing. Great, great problem to have. But you got to be able to trust these people. You got to be able to build mm. an actual good, reliable right. team. And this goes for you with you being able to get editors and you being able to get somebody to maybe to run your social media as you continue to grow. You can still have that authenticity where you're the main person and you can answer people and this and that. But at some point, it's going to get too hard for you to uh, monitor everything. I honestly have that now where it's like I have, again, we were like listing off my sponsorships where it's like, damn, I got to make sure that I'm posting all these like the amount of times that they want me to or even just authentically posting and making sure that like I'm a, like influencing the people. Again, sounds so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a clip. <laughs> It sounds so bad, but yeah, no, I have to. I'm getting sound like to that a drug point. dealer in high school. Gonna, no, I'm going to influence you to try this J out real quick. Come on, it's a gateway drug. I swear. Try this I protein mean... powder. I swear, the rains, the way they hit your lips. <laughs> 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 no, I swear, but yeah, no. Eventually, I probably need someone, but I'm also super picky, so. That's the only reason why I've been so hesitant to actually hire someone to edit on my YouTube. Like maybe I'll just like get all the content and then just send it out and let's see what they give me. But I'm like, I want things done a certain way, but also it's very pricey. So it's again, you're investing in yourself once again, when I'm just starting to make money for myself, it's like, oh, we're throwing it out again. Like yeah. which just is, to grow better. Which, 
and to be quite honest with you, I technically haven't made any money from this business yet. Technically, I've made money, but like technically speaking, you know, you're sitting in an office. Like I, I say this a lot of podcasts, people can't see past the cameras, right? But you're sitting in an office worth a lot of money, right? No one's purchased any of this for me. I've purchased all this myself. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of videographers that. That's work what I'm saying. You make the money, and then it goes right back. It in goes here. right back into reinvesting, yep. and that's important, though. So like, there's a lot of people of videographers. There's a lot of people that would just be like, oh yeah, well. I work for this company, they bought me my camera, or they bought me the stabilizer, or they bought me this, this piece of equipment. And I'm like, all right, that's cool. But like when you guys part ways, they're gonna expect that equipment back. Oh yeah. That's or you're this. gonna have to work off the time and you're not gonna get paid. So you wind up paying for it tenfold in another way. My opinion has always been, I don't need you to buy me shit. Don't buy me anything. Don't pay for anything. Yeah. I'll pay for it. Yeah. You gotta take care of my invoice though. It's so like <clears> when right. you ask me why is the price this, why are we doing it? Because I'm using this. Because I'm using this with this. Yeah, my time. So the reinvesting is important, and reinvesting in your learning as well. So if you need, when we when we cut the cameras off, if you have questions about basic shit with editing, let me know. I used Final Cut very briefly for a little while. I was a Premiere guy for a long time, and now I use DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci is my home f- means DaVinci, and yeah. I always well, I I feel like that's another thing that we can like circle back to like my following and stuff. Um, I invested in a camera, and I feel like once I started getting pictures on a Nice camera, like the DSLR, right? Mm-hmm. That's correct. You have Sony? Yeah, Sony, yeah. the A7 III. Nice. A, something like that. Good camera. I have the, um, that's, an, that's an S3, and that's an R... Uh, yeah, that's an A7S3, and that's an R3 right there. Okay, so that's one that I have, and I feel like that has caught Sony's so much more attention in terms mm-hmm. of, like, quality and, like, hitting the algorithm or hitting the Explore page. Like, I can see which ones go. And it's definitely the ones that are in higher quality better pictures so like that's huge recommendation for people who want sponsorships like don't just go on your i mean i hate to say it because it's a lot of money that you're spending like i spent what maybe three thousand dollars on my camera yep uh a7 III body is probably about two plus the lens the lens i spent like another 800 because it's a sigma so we'll talk about that no we don't do no we don't do sigmas in this office sorry we don't do sigmas. We 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 only shoot with Zeiss. We got Zeiss glass everywhere. Zeiss and G Masters. That's all anyway, we shoot in here. Anyway, <laughs> so again, I hate to tell people to invest three thousand dollars in a camera because of better pictures, but like at the end of the at the end of the day, you're investing in yourself. Yep. Yep. And I don't think there's ever going to be a time that I'm going to be like, oh yeah, I'm making so much off influencing because no, it's going right back into everything else. And he, but it need and it, like I said already, I sound like a broken record. It needs to be. Yes. You need to reinvest. You need to like just like. I don't want my landlord to hear. Just like with the office, <laughs> but whispering. Just like with the office, and and getting the bigger space. Like I'm very nervous right now. I'm very nervous. I'm, I'm like a very positive person, so I'm gonna send you all the positive vibes and be like, go for it. I'm like neutral. I'm very positive. I could definitely be negative, and I try so hard not to because everyone says, "Oh, Nick, you're always so positive." And I go, "Yeah, you just see me behind closed doors sometimes when I'm just like in my feels and a road bump uh, comes, and I just." It knocks me off my axis and I just get nasty, not to people, but just to myself. And just, I, I try, I got to crack myself out of that. It, it's, it's tough because I'm realistic. And I not, used to be. And I'm not saying that you're not realistic when you're, when you're ultra positive all the time. I used to be like you. I used to be a realistic. I just know that X, Y, Z can happen, but so can A, B, C. So it could be a negative or it could be a positive. So I sit in the middle. So I know that the, Tyler always says, stop thinking the worst things and, uh, that could happen. I was just going to say that. Yeah. I, I, I constantly. So like I'm a big believer in the law of attraction. So I always believe in the good and it tends to come back to me. So and that has started all the way from like when I was getting out of school and I was like, oh, my God, I want to be a big four auditor. Like, I want to get there. I want to get there. And I ended up at the number one. So which I was at, I'm, I was at Deloitte. Like I was literally the number one accounting firm in the world. And I wanted it so bad. And I literally just from then on believed in the law of attraction. And it seems to be like hitting every time. It's like everything is like slowly like falling into place. And that's why I was like be positive like the entire time. Like even if you want to believe in the realistic and you're like, oh, but this could happen. No, just like focus on that one goal. And I feel like it happens. It does. No, you're a thousand percent correct. You really are. I mean, Kai, Kai Green's saying for how many years thoughts become things. It's so. It's, it's true, though. It's so true. I hate to like sound like a crazy person, but it's isn't that true. sad though that you sound like a crazy person by believing in that yes. and energy and and but it actually comes projecting back to it you, out? And that's the only reason why I project it out because I know it'll come back. So like that's what I'm saying. Get the space. <laughs> no, I know, I know, I know. I have to because I know that it, there'll be a lot more good to, out of that that can come. Yeah. There's more space for me to do product videography and product photography because in here I'm slammed. Like. I push all my shit to the edge of the wall, and I don't have enough room. Like I bring these backdrops down to do 
actual stuff on the table and this and that. And I just, without the windows too, it becomes a less creative, welcoming spot. I was going to say, you don't even have like natural light in here. Yeah, no. I never know what time of day it is outside. When I was editing, oh my before God, the you're dog, right. before the dog and before I'd look at like time and shit like that, I, when I first got this office, I would sit in here from like eight in the morning until one, two in the morning. And I would just like be here because I didn't have to leave anywhere for the dog. So I would just be here and I would like walk outside. I'm like, oh shit. And I'd turn my phone off, do not disturb. My mom would be like, where the fuck are you? This is when I still lived at home. Wow. I'm like, oh yeah. You know, I'm working. I'm working. You know, kind of like what I did in my room. Just now I'm in a different place. <laughs> so it, it becomes tough. It, it becomes tough. I, uh, I try to remain so positive. I do. I really do. I promise. I try to. I try to. And I'm going to, I'm going to work. This is my, my verbal commitment. I'm going to work on it. Okay. I'm going to work on it. I also feel like it got 10 times better once I quit my job. Like, I'm super positive now. Like, I just keep everything, like, thinking of the best. And, like, I wish people the best, too. It's, like, very weird. I've, like, turned into this different person. I used to be, like, so serious, like, realistic. I was like, oh, but this could happen. And, like, that's where my anxiety kicked in, which that's gone, too. I, I left work and I have no anxiety. <laughs> like I'm the happiest person ever. Like everyone quit their job. <laughs> That's the best little, thing ever. A little fucking jealous right now. <laughs> little anxiety, huh? What's this pit in the middle of my <laughs> chest constantly? No, I don't. I used to be like I used to have really bad anxiety, especially during prep. Now, nothing. It's like, I, yeah, good things, all good things. So I'll send you the best. She's sending. She's sending me the vibes. She's sending me the vibes. So. Let me let me ask you this. Um, in terms of where you see yourself going now, like, do you see an end goal or are you just enjoying the ride as it comes? That I don't see an end goal. Love that. I was it's hoping you were like, gonna say that. Yeah, no, no, no. There, I'm just really just enjoying the ride and like appreciating every opportunity that comes my way. And I'm like, this is awesome. Like, this is going like great. But again, I'm not like bragging. It's just like, cool. This is awesome. That's that's just kind of how I take it. Every opportunity, I'm just like. Yep, works for me. Like, I want you to take that out of your your speaking points too. I don't right. want you to say I'm not bragging because people are gonna think what they're gonna think. Oh yeah, but I you you've earned this and you're earning it constantly and you're working for it. So don't ever say I'm not bragging because it should just be known yeah. that you're not. You're just speaking yeah. what exactly is going on. You're speaking things into existence and you're allowing whatever else is going to come to come. Right. I mean, it's just crazy. Like I literally busted my ass in school. Like I rushed all my degrees to just work and make money. And now I'm in, I have student loans. I have debt. But like now I'm just like doing something completely different. And it was like an eye opener and a life changer. Actually, you want to know the real reason why I quit my job? Tell me. Again, it was the whole busy seasons part, but then I got on a phone with the owner of Wolfpack, and he told me- That's a backpack? That's the backpack. Okay, okay. That's the backpack, the, sure. the army backpack. Yeah. We got on a call, and we, it was just like really like an introduction call, and he told me I was working a nine to five, and all of a sudden, I got like a terminal illness. He was like, I only had like a month to live. Dog okay? Yeah, he, he, no, he yawned. He okay, yawned. right. <laughs> He's like, I got a terminal illness. He's like, I only had a month to live. He's like, I think he has two little girls. He told me he saw his life like flash before his eyes. He was like, damn, I worked a nine to five. I was miserable this entire time. All of a sudden, now I'm going to die type of thing. And then he was like, and then he survived it. He's totally fine now. He's like, you know what? I quit my job and I started something that I absolutely love. And Wolfpack is blowing up now. And I was like, damn. I don't want that to happen to me. I was like, I do not want to wait for something tragic to happen to be like, oh, this is what I really want to do and do it. So, and that's another reason why I was just like, you know what? Accounting can come and go. I can go back to it. I can go be a bookkeeper. I can do whatever I want. I have all my degrees. Like I, I have a name for myself, even if like influencing doesn't work. Like and I still have a great resume. And you're 24. And I'm 24. You're 24. So I was like, let me go try something that I actually really like doing and actually have like an inspiration for and a love for. And that's really like the fitness world. And it's been good ever since. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That's awesome. I love that. And shouts to Wolf. I mean, I don't, I don't, back, I don't yeah. know him. I don't know the, I just great kind of guy. Great guy. Learn about the brand. What's his name? Did I just put you on the spot? Yeah. I just put you on the spot. <laughs> it's okay. No, no, no. I'm like that. I'm like that too. Sorry. So shouts to Wolfpack. My bad. I've, uh, it's all the rains. <laughs> 
Um, so when when are you? Is it a secretive or when are you? When do you officially? Uh, the fourteenth. Okay, I didn't know if it was like a secret. Thing. No, it's not a secret. Okay, I mean I haven't like announced it on my like Instagram or anything. So I'll let you breaking kinda... ground right here on Rizology. <laughs> I haven't announced it. Um, no, but yeah, the fourteenth we are leaving. Good, that's awesome. So I, I just, think it's gonna be a nice start for both of you. Seriously, a nice start in a fresh yeah, new area. I think it's gonna be great for content too. Um, just in terms of like, we're not gonna have a winter, so like uh, content all year round. It's not like we're stuck in the apartment and there's snow and all that good stuff. But no more pizza, no more pasta. I'll send you no, some down. No Don't more worry. I'll, you guys hit. You guys hit Nick up. I'll ship it down to you. You tell me you want a little Vincent's pizza. I'll ship it down. We'll be Honestly, okay. Honestly, I really don't like Vincent's. I'll you don't be like little Vincent's? up on this podcast. That's okay. That's okay. So, what's your Overrated. favorite? It, it uh, it's not the best pizza on Long Island. That's for sure. What's your favorite pizza? If you had to pick one spot, we're like we're post podcast. All right, cut the cameras off. We we want to go get pizza right now. Oh my god, I think it was New Hyde Park. Uh, New Hyde Park pizza. Okay, Park uh, Pizza. That one was like right across from Natural Body, I believe. Yes. Yes, their pizza was amazing. All the Brooklyn pizza is good. I want to say that was like my top choice. Second okay. is like Cipollini over here. Yeah, a little bar pizza. Yeah. Um. Well, what was my third? Oh, um, La Pizza. Uh, no, La Piazza. La Piazza. Yeah. In Merrick. Merrick. They that's, Merrick that's one. That's my third. That's a good one. I'll tell you what. Roses Pizza in Huntington. They got some wild shit going on there. I love it. Really? Yeah. They have all kinds of wild flavors. It's very hard when I'm walking Kenji late at night to just like not look in and drool and just keep walking like this because it's right there. It's so easy. It's just right there. And then he always drags Damn. me. He always drags me in because for some reason, for a dog that's never had pizza, if I have a slice of pizza in my hand, he's the most attentive. You would think that he's like drill sergeant status. He's like, what do you want me to do? You want me to sit? You want me to run? You want me to stay? What do you want me to do? Just, just let me get a bite. Like it's the cheese. He doesn't. He doesn't like. He, like he eats it cheese, but he's not. He doesn't go crazy over it. Really? Something about pizza. I'll walk him past Little Vincent's Pizza at late at night. Yeah. People have pizza in their hands. Every person he stops and looks at them. Which one? Which one? Can I get? Can I get a bite? I feel like one day you just have to give him a slice and see what happens. I'm such a. I'm so, I know you're a raw feeder. I get it. I'm such a. I'm such a weirdo with the dog and what I give him. I'm always like, is there garlic in it? Is there onions? What my, did you cook this with? My dog has a meal plan, so it's okay. I love that. My dog has a meal plan. Uh, I cook him ground beef like every day. That's awesome. I mean, I, except for the cost of ground beef, but that's awesome. Target. Remember we talked about You did. About you this? told me. She's the plug. Target. Target is the plug. You're the plug that's for telling me. That's always the plug. Okay. I okay. I've literally looked up who's the cheapest like supermarket. You can literally go around from like BJ's, Costco. I mean, no other like than New York has this, but like Target is the cheapest one. I remember that. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm gonna be there later today. Yeah, you'll save some money. I'll be there later today. And they have the Target has the three pound ground beef, which is like I think eighteen dollars. Oh, it's perfect. But like that's enough for them. I yeah, mean, for them. Yeah. I'm yeah. Just... I I give like one to Rocky a day, so like a pound with each meal. Okay. Damn, your dog's eating a lot. Bro, he's 65 pounds in five months. <laughs> okay, so he's so Kenji's got 12 pounds on him right now, 13 pounds on him right now, and he's going to... Yeah, but he's been gaining five pounds by the week. Yeah, he's going to blow Or like ass. by the two weeks, yeah. He's not heavy either. He's lean. No, he's lean. Yeah. That's the worst part. He's not full grown at all. He's going to be a big boy. That's going to be awesome. Listen, plug yourself. How can people get in touch with you? How can people follow the journey if they're not following already? Oh, yeah. Plug yourself. <laughs> no, say it. What, what's your Instagram? What's everything? Oh, um, <laughs> Plug yourself. <laughs> That's oh, what I, I mean. Like, like what's your Instagram name? Uh, you know, shout outs to anybody, oh. stuff like that. My Instagram, Sabrina Nick underscore fit. I hate uh, Sabrina Nick fit was already taken. Sabrina Nick was already taken. So Sabrina Nick underscore fit. And then, yeah, that, that's really it. That's everything. So I'm Sabrina Nick and Nick. And Nick. Yeah, so as I thought when we were filming the other day, she kept introducing me. She kept saying, hi, Sabrina, Nick here. Uh, and I thought she was saying Sabrina and Nick. And I was looking at her. I'm like, why are you talking about the guy behind the camera? I'm like, you don't so have to. So even after we filmed the last shot, you were like, she still said. I'm like, she yo, she has Nick. said my name on every take. What is going on here? You don't have to tell people I'm here. I love how you didn't put together. I didn't. I had no idea. I just always knew Sabrina. I just, and when I type in your name on Instagram, if I, go to, if I have to go to your page, Sabrina. I never even looked at the rest of it. Oh, we didn't even touch upon why I never put my last name. Well, let's do it real quick. Oh, it was literally because of my job. I did not want people knowing my LinkedIn and my Instagram. Oh. So that's why I've kept it hidden and everyone knows me as Sabrina Nick. 
Like my last name is Nick. It is not. It is Magrini. Oh, <laughs> I can do that now. She blew it. I can do that now. Oh, you can. Okay. I can because oh, you're not, not accounting anymore. Yeah, I'm not. I don't have like a regular job. Hi, Kenji. Kenji. What are you doing? What a bear. All right, we're gonna get out of here. We're gonna get you some food. You want to go out? Oh yeah. Oh, look at his face. Do you want to go out? All right, shout out to all my supporters. I hope you guys see this and enjoy it. I'll try to do more YouTubes or maybe a podcast. Now She's going to do a podcast. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give her some basic tips on how to start a podcast. She's going to start her own podcast. All right, sounds good. I think that's imperative. I think that's important. And we'll see you guys in Florida. Yes, you'll see you guys in Florida. This is episode 35 with... <laughs> <laughs> with Kenji. Wow, just, you're just going to give the outro for me? Okay. With Sabrina Nick. And yeah. And Nick. I appreciate for real. I do appreciate you stopping of by, course. chopping it up of with me. Of course, hell yeah. It was a good time. Yeah. Um, when I'm in Florida, we're definitely going to link up. Yes. And then obviously, I'll I'll see you until you leave. So yes. I'll see you there every night. Yep. I'll, every, I'll be there tonight. So I'm gonna be there tonight too with Tyre. I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be training legs, but I have to uh, I have to make sure that the gauze stays in my booty because of the uh, booty surgery. Oh yeah, we're open here. I told them. Guess what? <laughs> the by the booty surgery. Side note: the booty surgeon's coming on the podcast. Okay, again, not for a BBL. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's it's for stuff not as fun as that. Um, uh, you're gonna bump my camera. Excuse me. Come over here, big head. Um, yeah, I was when I had my follow up appointment with him uh, a couple days ago. I was like, I'm literally leaving. I go, Yo, Doc, you want to come on the podcast talk about my butt surgery? He goes, Yeah, done. Okay, great. That's awesome. His assistant took all my information down. She goes, Let us know when you want him on. I go, Okay, cool. Wow, love so, it. Listen, we we're, we're transparent, so I gotta put some fresh gauze in there, and we'll come train legs tonight, and uh, hopefully uh, that works out. <laughs> But once again, I appreciate everybody listening. Thank you, Sabrina. Thank course, you, Kenji, guys. for uh, hitting Thank this outro. Listening. And uh, on that note, peace. Bye.